the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the living Jesus. In the name of our most high God and on behalf of the clergy, the CRM, we welcome ourselves to the first Sunday in July and the second half of the year. We want to thank God who through his infinite mercies has been with us up to now. And it is sure that he will not leave us. So as we come to him, let us come in hall with a heart full of praises to come and commit the rest of the year and the situation over which he is master into his hands as we remain in silence to pray. Let us pray. Father, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, our most high God, we thank you for how you have through your Holy Spirit continually given us the breath of life. We thank you because we know if it has not been you, we would have been consumed. Thank you for keeping us Thank you for guiding us. Thank you for providing for us. Thank you for being the light in our darkness. Father, I accept our thanks, O Lord, in Jesus' name. We thank you as your people, your temple, your church, that despite every opposition of the enemy, you have not allowed the gates of hell to prevail over your church. We thank you. Father, accept our thanks, O oh Lord, in Jesus' name. We thank you as a nation for how miraculously we have been going through this season of turmoil. These terrible times but you have been keeping us as the apple of your eyes. Father, accept our thanks, O oh Lord, in Jesus' name. We thank you as families that are called by your name over our children, over our wives, over our husbands, over our relations. Father, accept our thanks, O Lord, in Jesus' name. We commit to this service in your hand, particularly that we have come to learn at your feet. We ask that both us and our children and those who wherever we may be in diaspora or wherever, we will be taught of you. Great will be our peace. We know we are for signs and wonders. So we look expectantly unto you, Father, that you will meet each and every one of us at our different points of need to the glory of your name in Jesus' name. Your name will be glorified. We will all be blessed. In Jesus' name we have prayed.
Our hope in him is 2416. All things praise thee, Lord most high. You may please be seated. sentence is taken from the letter of Paul to Timothy, the first letter, chapter 6, verse 6. First Timothy 6, 6. There is a great gain in godliness with contentment. This is the word of the Lord. As we come today in the presence of our Most High God, I want us to come with our hearts penitently as we take the corporate confession together as contained in paragraph 16, page 16 of our Holy Communion Manual. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against your divine majesty and against our brothers and sisters in thought and word and deed and in what we have left undone through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault. We are truly sorry and repent of all our sins. 
for the sake of your son, Jesus Christ, who died for us. Forgive us all that is past and grant that henceforth, ceasing to live to sin, we may live to serve you in newness of life to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon us. Pardon and deliver us from all our sins. Confirm and strengthen us in all goodness. And keep us in life eternal. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. The collect for Sunday, 5th July, Trinity 4. July, 5th July 2020. I'll take on our behalf. Almighty God, you show to those who are in error the light of your truth that they may return to the way of righteousness. May we and all who have been admitted into the fellowship of faith in Christ reject those things which are contrary to our profession and follow all things as are agreeable to the same, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Father, once more we come thankfully into your presence. We thank you for the breath of life. We thank you for making us partners in progress in the work of your kingdom. We thank you for having been created in your image. We thank you for the grace of our complete senses. Father, I accept our thanks, O Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. We thank you once more on our nation, on our church, on our family, on the works of our hand, and most importantly, for your ministry. Father, I accept our thanks, O Lord, in Jesus' name. We thank you as a community of faith of the Chapel of the Healing Cross, both resident here in the Adarab and all over the world. Thank you particularly for your children in other parts of the world because it has been glad tidings. It has been things that prove to us that of a truth we have a father who is faithful, who is good, who is kind, who is all-powerful. Father, accept our thanks, O Lord, in Jesus' name. Once more, Father, we are in your presence and we are your children. And so, therefore, as your children, thank you for being our God, the God of Bethel, who has been meeting our needs, even unto an overflowing measure. Once more, we come to you, O oh Lord, today, bringing once more, because the Bible told us that when the children of God gathered and they were speaking and talking, that a book of remembrance was opened for them in heaven. Father, as we gather today to talk together, to learn at your feet, 
both physically here and each and every one of us, wherever we are, we know there is no boundary in terms of space and time with you. So as we talk together with you, O oh Lord, open that book of remembrance in regard to every need and every challenge each and every one of us might be facing wherever we are. We bring to you our children. They have been off school for so long. It has been you keeping them. And so we bring their needs into, unto you, O oh Lord. Those of them in exam writing classes will be resuming very soon. We ask that as they go, your protection will be upon them in Jesus' name. They and those who are in other classes, right from the cradle to the university and other polytechnics and colleges of education, Father, they will all be taught of you. They will be wiser than even like Jesus told us than even teachers. They will receive favor and good results, both spiritually and physically, will be their portion in Jesus' name. We pray for our health sector, remembering particularly our brethren who are in the forefront of this pandemic. No situation is too difficult for you. In those days, you were accused of sleeping. But you rose and the storm got calm. This storm of COVID-19, Father, we know everything worked for good for those of us who love you and are called according to your purpose. And so we speak healing into those who have been infected. We speak protection to each and every one of us as we go out on a daily basis. We commit our doctors, nurses, and all other paramedics, drivers, and people who are directly involved. Father, both members of our church, members of our family in Nigeria and world over, oh Lord, that Healing will be our portion in Jesus' name. Let the raging storm be calm once and for all to the glory of your name. Let there be a return to normalcy in Jesus' name. The economy of our nation, Father, we commit into your hand. And the polity and the governance, Father, we ask that righteousness that exhausts a nation will abound in Nigeria. We pray for our economy. This downturn, Father, you will turn it around and it will become a boisterous economy to the glory of your name. These and all other needs of each and every one of us, wherever we are, our different supplications, Father, answers that will surprise us and even surprise our detractors, Father, you will grant us in Jesus' name. And we are it may be that you are still preparing our answers to be much, much greater than we can imagine or ask for. The grace to patiently wait upon you without going back. Father, you will grant us in Jesus' name. We pray for your church. The grace, particularly in this time, that your church will grow in leaps and bounds. That your church will be cleansed. That your church will be made more glorious. And ever ready for your coming, Father, grant us in Jesus' name. We pray for missionaries and your servants who are in difficult places. Father, uphold them in Jesus' name. We pray for places where darkness still rove. Shine your light there. As we go in worship once more and in our Bible study today, Father, go with us. Glorify your name. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. The Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. The kingdom come, the will be done, not as it is in heaven. Give us this day bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is thy kingdom, thy power, and thy glory, forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia, amen. Alleluia, amen.
invocation before the minister of the word in 3082, a charge to keep I have. Please stand at the singing of the last stanza. Let's please be seated. The lesson for today, 1 Timothy chapter 6 from verses 6 to 12. I'll read on our behalf. 1 Timothy 6, 6 to 12. There is great gain in godliness with contentment. For we brought nothing into the world. And we cannot take anything out of the world. But if we have food and clothing, with this we shall be content. But those who desire to be rich fall into temptation, into a snare, into many senseless and artful desires that plunge men into ruin and destruction. For the love of money is the root of all evils. It is through this craving that some have wandered away from the faith and pierced their hearts with many pangs. But as for you, man of God, shun all this. Aim at righteousness, godliness, faith, love, steadfastness, gentleness. Fight the good fight of the faith. Take hold of the eternal life to which you were called when you made the good confession in the presence of many witnesses. This is the word of the Lord. The choir ministration.
rise for the majesty majesty Worship His Majesty unto Jesus, be your glory, honor, and praise, Majesty. Kingdom authority flow from his throne unto his own, his anthem
Lord of majesty. Worship His majesty. Jesus, who God Offer three him. Three, one, one, one. Take my life and let it be. First and even numbers. Father, we thank you for your grace upon our lives, particularly the opportunity given unto us to fellowship together this day. To you be praised in Jesus' name. The offering of your people you accept and bless. As we study today, Lord, we ask that you give us perfect understanding. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You're welcome to Bishop 3, today, 5th July, 2020. Last month, we looked at self-control, the example of Joseph. And we observed that in all areas of the life of Joseph, he was a perfect example. And he is an example that we must learn from if we want to make a success of our race as Christians on earth. We saw that as a young man, he was, he was self-controlled. Whereas when his name is mentioned, what we come to mind readily is the fact that he ran away from his master's wife. He did not want to do her wish. But we discover again that beyond that, his life was full of great examples of self-control. As a young man, he was good. As a leader, as, as an MD of his 
master's company, as it were, he performed excellently. And when things were not too okay with him, he did not, he did not go into the vices that men of his own, young men of his own age will do. When he went into the prison, he did not, he did not compromise spiritual standards. He perfectly represented his God. He wanted to please God, not man. Now today we are looking at self-control as a key to pleasing God in a perverse generation. Self-control as a key to pleasing God in a perverse generation. And we're taking the text from 2 Timothy chapter 3. We'll read the first five verses. This know also that in the last days perilous times shall come. For men shall be lovers of their own selves, covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemous, disobedient to parents. They will be unthankful, unholy. They will be without natural affection, truth breakers, false accusers, incontinent, fears, despisers of those that are good, traitors, heady, high-minded, high-minded, lovers of pleasure, more than lovers of God, having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof. From such, turn away. So this is our text for today's study. And the introduction, self-control, is the last of the fruits of the Spirit, which are love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, God, goodness, gentleness, faithfulness, and self-control. It's a fruit, and inside this fruit we have the qualities we are talking about. As we we'll see in Galatians chapter 5, 22 to 25. Now, self-control is defined as the ability to regulate one's emotions, thoughts, and behavior in the face of temptations, provocations, and impulses. It is a cognitive process that is necessary for regulating one's behavior in order to achieve specific goals. Amen. Amen. It is a process. Self-control is not attained just by a touch of the button. No. It grows. It continues. And the, 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 the end result is to be that such one as believers are able to, to stop themselves from going into some things that ordinarily others will go into. So the ability to control self be it physically, emotionally, spiritually, or otherwise, is a pertinent key to pleasing our God in this perverse generation. A generation that we found ourselves in. And so, when one is able to self-control, when we're able to control self, it is a sign that Christ will really dwells in us. Christ really dwells in you. If today you can show, you can, you can demonstrate self-control, especially in situations where others will say, no, there is no need for that. And so we must continually look at ourselves and ask, am I really, am I actually doing the things that I should do as a believer? Am I actually doing the things I should do as a believer. Let's read from 1 Peter chapter five, chapter 1, from 5 to 8. Likewise, ye younger, submit yourself unto the elders. Yea, all of you be subject one to another and be clothed with humility. For God resisted, resisted the proud and giveth grace to the humble. 
Humble yourself, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, that he may exalt you in due time, casting all your cares upon him, for he cared for you. Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about, seeking whom he may devour. And so, when you are able to humble yourself, you know, to humble oneself is a deliberate thing that must be done if you want to be like Jesus Christ, who the Bible says, though he was God on earth, he humbled himself to a point of death. And so self-control is key. And if you read from Proverbs chapter 25, you read from verse 27 to 28, 20 specifically says, he that has no control over his spirit is just like a city that is without a wall. And so we must be able to be definite in achieving a particular, this particular uh, quality of believer. Now, in the context of today's study, self-control is used as a key to pleasing God. We therefore need to define what a key is, what it means to please God, and the perverse generation. Now, a key in the context of a study is a quality of crucial importance in achieving an aim or an outcome. Just like a well-behaved child gets the attention of his or her parent, self-control is a fruit of the spirit. As a fruit of the spirit opens and keeps heavenly doors open to God's children. So when one has self-control, what we're saying is this, it has a way of opening, giving access to God. You know, as a child. And when you already have it done, you have the access. When you are self-controlled, it keeps this door of grace open unto you. For example, in Genesis chapter 6, from verse 1, if you get to verse 8, the Bible says, the world was terrible. God said, look, I'm even tired with this world. I'm going to, I'm going to destroy everybody. And remember then, the Bible says, one man, Noah, found grace with God. He was not doing what others were doing then. He found a way to separate himself. himself. And so, the Bible says he found grace. He pleased God in a generation of people that God said, every, the, the Bible said the imagination of the thoughts of the heart of men was only evil continually. But this man, Job, uh, this man, Noah, did what? He found grace. He pleased God. And if you look at Luke chapter 1 from verse 27 to 31, the Bible says, Mary was well favored among all the others. When people live the way they, they were not supposed to live, the man still found grace. Uh, the lady, the, 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 the Mary as, 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 as a woman, as a virgin, she did what? She pleased God. And so the Bible says, you are well favored. So when you have self-control, favor with God is guaranteed. The Lord will help us in the name of Jesus Christ. Then pleasing, number two, what does it mean to please? Pleasing simply means satisfying someone's criteria, someone's expectation, or appealing such a one. You are appealing such a one. When, they want, when that person hears your voice, say, oh, this is the person that is pleasing me. I am so much impressed with this person. Remember when Jesus was baptized in Matthew chapter 3? The Bible says, as he came forth, the heavens opened. And God, a voice spoke. I said, look, this is my well beloved. I am well pleased with this one. Listen to him. So, we need to have that, 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 that ability to do what? To please God. In what areas? Obeying God. Obeying God. You know, pleasing God, you must obey him. If you read from 1 John chapter 3, verse 22, he talks about when you obey his commandments, when you do the things that are pleasing unto God. Eh? When you obey him, you please him. When he said, don't do it, you don't do it. When he says, stand up, oh God, I'm standing up. You don't begin to rationalize. Don't begin to say, are you really talking to me, God? No. When you, when you obey God that way, you please him. Number two, fearing God. Amen. You must fear. You must, you know, when we talk about this fear, we're talking about revering him. 
placing him where he belongs as God. In Acts chapter 5, verse 29, Peter was saying, uh -uh, what do we do? Should we obey God or man? So obedience to God is key, is paramount. If we want to please him, fearing him is very, 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 very key also if you must please God. Then by being spiritually minded. If you want to please God, brother, you must be, you must be spiritually minded. If you want to please God, sister, you must be spiritually minded. If you read from Romans, Romans chapter, chapter number 8. Romans chapter 8. Romans chapter 8 is clear. If you want to please God, you read from verse 5. You say, for they that are after the flesh, they do mind the things of the flesh. But they that are after the spirit, the things of the spirit. For to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Because the carnal mind is an is enmity against God, for it is not subject to the law of God. Neither indeed can it be. So then they that are in the flesh cannot please God. So if you want to if you want to really please God, you must be spiritually minded. Then you must be one that dwells in his word. You understand his word. You are, you are, you know, you, you, the word of God dwells in you. In Joshua chapter 1 verse 8, it says, it says, this book of the law shall not depart out of your mouth. You must meditate on it day and night. By the time you're able to do that, you will make your ways pure and you will have good success. God will, will say, look, this one, you deserve success because you do what? You dwell in my word. My word dwells in you. In Colossians chapter 3, verse 16, he says, let the word of God dwell richly in you and in all wisdom. Amen. So, pleasing God also entails you dwelling in his word. Then you must be one that you praise him always. You offer unto him the sacrifice of praise, you, you can get that in Hebrews chapter 13. You will read from 15 to 16, you will see. Talking about offering unto God the sacrifices of praise. The kind of sacrifices that God himself is pleased with. You want to talk about the life of man, David, who you, can, you, you really will not see a scripture. One of, the, one of the verses in the book of Psalms that will not talk about praising God. Then, loving him. Loving God. If you read from Deuteronomy chapter 6, from verse 4 to 12, is a popular scripture. Moses was giving a child to the children of Israel, and he says unto them, he says, hear ye. Let us read from Hebrews chapter, from Deuteronomy chapter 6. Chapter 6, we will read from verse 4. It says, Hear, O Israel, the Lord your God is one Lord, and thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, and with all thy soul, and with all thy mind. And these words which I command thee this day shall be in, in thy heart. And it continues. But that verse 5 says, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy thy soul, and with all thy mind. It means, therefore, that assuming your, ball, your, your life is, is like a football and that is so inflated, when it is punctured, everything that should come out of your life should be love of God. Amen. So if you really want to please him, you must do what? You must love him. You cannot love, you cannot, you cannot love a person, and you cannot say you love a person and you don't obey him. You don't fear him. You don't reference him. You are not, his words does not move you, no. And so you must be able to be somebody who actually does what? Love God. Then number three, the perverse generation. The perverse generation. A generation that deliberately and stubbornly refused to, to acknowledge God. A generation that resists correction, resists guidance. A generation that do not want to listen to whatever is of God. The, 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 our outline here says, generation 
is a perfect generation is one that is faithless, unbelieving, wayward, a crooked one, without any trust in God. You know, Jesus said in, in Luke chapter 9, verse 14, he said, you, you, are, you, are, you are a perverse generation, a corrupt seed. And so we must be careful because there is no two way about the, the generation. There are no two ways about with which you can describe the generation we are in than to say it's a perverse generation. A generation that is so terrible. A generation that is so terrible. What else do we want to see in this world to be able to qualify it as one that is perverse? What other things are we looking at? One of my, my bosses in the ministry will say, look, <laughs> if God will not judge our generation, then God must have to go back and apologize to Sodom and Gomorrah. Why? The terrible things we see on a daily basis. Wickedness in high places, in low places. Brethren, this world we are in is terrible. More of these perversions are in our text for study today. Self-control is lacking, even in the church of God. When some preachers and members of church now do things that are te terrible. Things that are terrible. In fact, a woman was preaching here one time and she said, it will come to a time that even the devil would deny some people, don't they? Say, ah, I'm not as wicked as you are. People are so wicked, so terrible. Brethren, the Lord will help us in the name of Jesus Christ. And so we see immorality. We see dishonesty. We see disunity. We see, we see occultism. We see, we see disobedience. We see parents in, in doing def, de, terrible things. I read of the other day, they said a man was arrested for impregnating her own daughter. What about this pedophile thing we are seeing about? Brethren, we need to be very, very careful because we are already in a perverse generation. And except we have self-control, we may be taken away. And so the question for study today, number one says, what do you understand by self-control? By self being a key. What do you understand by that? We can, we can get the answer. Let me just read quickly from 1 Corinthians chapter 9. We'll read two verses. 1 Corinthians chapter 9, 24. It says, Know ye not that they which run in a race run all, but one receive the prize. He says, So run that ye may obtain. And every man that strives for the mystery is temperate in all things. Now they do it to obtain a corruptible crown, but we an incorruptible one. I therefore so run, not as uncertain, so I fight, not as one that beat the air, but I keep under my body and bring it unto subjection, lest that by any means, when I have preached the gospel, I myself should not be what? Cast away. It means, therefore, that the purpose for which you, you, you want to use self control as a key is for you to be able to do what? To achieve a goal. And that goal is to do what? To please God. That God will look at you and say, ah, there could be a thousand people here, but my son. My daughter, you have pleased me. That is the purpose. That is what self-control wants to achieve in the life of a believer. Question two, how can you apply this key practically to please God? We read from Romans chapter 8. A practical one. Your heart is tending towards God. You want to please God because that scripture we read in Romans chapter 8 says, look, to be carnally minded is an enemy. You are already an enemy to God. But if you want to be practical, you want to, you want to maintain that self-control because you want to do what? You want to please God as an individual now. You know, we said before that Christianity is, is more individual. You may be in a, in a, in a, in a, in a congregation, yet you are, you are to be assessed one-on-one. -on -one based on the race you are running, is it pleasing God or 
and knowing God. The Lord will help us in the name of Jesus Christ. Perfect generation is an understatement to describe our uh, present world. True or false? I'm sure you will say true. It's an understatement if you call it perverse. It's more terrible than being perverse. What are the vices that we can list to support this assertion? I know you can remember many, 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 many. The Lord will help us in the name of Jesus Christ. If you read from Romans chapter 1, from verse 18, it says, For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven again all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who hold the truth in unrighteousness. I'll jump to verse 21. It says, Because that when they knew God, they glorified him not as God. Neither we are thankful, but became vain in their imaginations, and their foolish heart was darkened. He said, professing themselves to be wise, they became fools. They changed the glory that they changed the glory of the uncorruptible God into an image made like to corruptible man, and to birds, and four-footed beasts, and creeping things. If you continue, verse 26, he said, for this cause, God gave them up into vile affection. For even their women did change the natural use into that which is against nature. LGBT. Mm? Gays. Mm? A man would just wake up and say, I want to become a woman. You know, this thing talks about people who really, really uh, their thinking is not correct. The Lord will help us in the name of Jesus Christ. And so we can, we, what we need to do in question number two, say how can you as a Christian correct these vices as it concerns the world and Nigeria in particular? Philippians chapter 4, from verse 8. Philippians chapter 4, from verse 8, a very popular scripture also, talking about the things you should set your mind on, the things you should think about. The things that should preoccupy your thoughts so that you will not be one of those who, who are like others. You just think and think and think and begin to do things that are not correct. The Bible says in, in, in Philippians chapter 4 from verse 8, it says to us, Whatsoever things eh, are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, Whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of good report, if there be any virtue and if there be any praise, he said, think on these things. It means, therefore, you must reset your thought system, the things you major in. You must begin to, re, to, 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 to rearrange those things. And not only you, everybody around you begin to think about the things that are yours. The things that are pure, the things that are honest, begin to arrange to think about those things from your bedroom, the life of your children, the environment you belong in. Don't join others to do things that are not correct. When we're able to do that, we gradually begin to correct the vices that we have around us. Number four, there are some of these vices in our local churches. Let us list them and state how you can use self-control as a key to correct them. I'm a priest. You are the church members. Go and think of the things you have in your church, in your fellowship. Eh? Your fellowship group. Those vices. Ask the question, how am I going to work to correct those things? The Lord will help you in the name of Jesus Christ. Question number five. How can we relate the current situation going on in the world? To lack of self-control. How can we? If what we had at the beginning, the genesis of this, this pandemic, if what is being said is true, then it was because of lack of self-control. The Lord will help us in the name of Jesus Christ. Beloved of God, the sub team of the study, as we conclude this morning, has shown that we are all created for God's pleasure. And to also please him all the time, whether in good time or bad time. And even in this perverse world, 
the perverse world they were in, when, when, the, when the abnormal is becoming the normal, when the wrong things are becoming, becoming celebrated, eh? when madmen and women are becoming stars, the Lord will help us in the name of Jesus Christ. Brethren, we have had the word today. By the time we get to our, our various the platform, we shall continue the study on Wednesday. The Lord will help us in the name of Jesus Christ. The memory verse is Galatians chapter 5, verse 22 to 25, that says, But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, patience, kindness, goodness, gentleness, faith, faithfulness, self control. Again, so there is no law, and those who belong to Christ Jesus have crucified the flesh with all passion and desire. The Lord will help us in the name of Jesus Christ. It is Bible study and a prayer project. Shall we pray? The first prayer point is just pray and thank and ask God to forgive you in the areas that you have not been properly exhibiting self-control. Ask him to help you that his spirit will possess you afresh in such a way that you, you will respond to him at all points, no matter the, 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 the provocation, no matter, no matter, no matter. Ask that the Lord will forgive you where you have sinned and plead with him that he will help you because without him you cannot please him. So let pray that he will help you. Praise God again for preservation and for provision during this pandemic and ask that he that is God will continually help you, that you continually please him as you continue your race as a believer. Pray that God releases upon you the freshness of his spirit and that the power of God will continually be at work in your life. Our Father, we appreciate you for your word that we have studied, how we can please you by exhibiting self-control. We ask, Lord, that we will, in all places we find ourselves, exhibit self-control. We will not in any way lose control, Lord. We will not be carried away by the frivolities of our times. That no matter the packaging of sin, no matter the packaging given sin in this perverse world, we will not be carried away in the name of Jesus Christ. Lord, I will not follow a multitude to sin, but will be so well devoted to you, our most high God, in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Heavenly Father. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen. We want to thank God that from the beginning of the service, we commended everything into his hand. And he took us through both in our praises and our prayers, and particularly in the teaching that we have learned at his feet. We thank God for having been told that self-control is a process of controlling our behavior to achieve the goal of grace in our relationship with you, with others, and with ourselves. With the aim of achieving salvation, Father, we pray that having heard these words today, these words will not be against us, even a judgment to the glory of your name in Jesus' name. We have learned too that self-control is the last of all the fruit of the Holy Spirit. Love, joy, peace. We ask the grace to fully imbibe all this fruit and be self-controlled and be saved unto eternity, Father, you will grant us in Jesus' name. We thank you particularly for the way you have since this pandemic been keeping us just like that widow who said because of the death of her husband, the prophet, they are indebted. And the prophet told her to go and gather and be filling pots. You have not allowed us to lack in any way. Father, accept our thanks, O Lord, in Jesus' name. 
as we go after this service, we ask that we will not lack any good thing in Jesus' name. He will meet us at every point of our need in Jesus' name. We pray particularly for fellowship groups as, and even the Bible study on Wednesday as we will continue to expound on these words. Father, they will lighten every area of our darkness in Jesus' name. The way you met those two gentlemen after your death on their way to him house. And by the time you are speaking with them, their fears, their anxiety were brought to a stop. And you opened their eyes and you even fed them. Continually feed us spiritually and physically in Jesus' name. We pray for families that have been slated to be prayed for this week. We ask that in their going out and coming in, upon their children, upon the works of their hand, upon their standing with you, Father, they will be kept holy and acceptable and prosperous in Jesus' name. We pray for those whose bad days begin from today. Thanking you for the bad day celebrants of last week. We pray that all the bad day celebrants for this week, Father, they will go in strength, in peace, in joy, and in everything that are bound unto glorifying your name. They will be blessed. They will remember the days of their birth and this week, even for each and every one of us, when we look back as to things you will do, ear tingling and things eyes have not seen, we will glorify your name. We will come back next Sunday to say, Father, you have kept us and no one is missing. You have blessed us unto overflowing. We have been taught of you and every of our fear and darkness has been lightened. Thank you, Father. We give you all the glory. We give you the honor. We give you the power, the might, and the dominion. For we pray in Jesus' name. The bless, the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God. And of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. I want to thank each and every one of us. We are very sorry we had little hitches, technical hitches this morning. And I still believe that some of us, we are still there to watch us as we just rectify the challenge a few minutes ago. We promise each and every one of us that by the special grace of God, as we have noted this, we will put everything in place to make sure that such and occurrence do not happen again. Let me also say that very quickly, by the special grace of God, the service will be uploaded, uh, uploaded 
in YouTube and uh, WhatsApp so that we can watch what has actually transpired, most especially the Bible study aspect. We also want to welcome each and everyone who is also joining us for the first time. Uh, it is a pity that if there is anyone who joined today, uh, experienced this little hitch, we know that such a thing will not occur as we will put every measure in place to make sure that we do not experience what we have experienced today. The Lord will bless you for your understanding in the name of Jesus Christ. For those that are celebrating their birthday today, we wish you well. And uh, from today through uh, this week, we wish you well. We pray that we'll have good and happy celebration. I will have reason to give thanks to God for what God has done for you in the mighty name of Jesus. Uh, FUSAD will begin next week by the special grace of God. Uh, we have made it a point of duty that this COVID-19 will not stop our programs. We will continue with that. But if there is any fellowship who wish or uh, who wants to uh, celebrate their anniversary or her anniversary, please, as I earlier mentioned, you will have to see me so that we can put the measure in place to do so. By the special grace of God, we'll have our ESCO meeting. I trust God that the Secretary of Council will also put the notice uh, on our platform, the Council's platform, uh, the ESCO meeting platform. So if you are a member of ESCO, try and uh, note that so that we'll have our meeting next Sunday. The time will be stipulated as, we, as the Secretary will put it on the platform. We thank God for a life that was well spent, and God has called him home. Uh, our Baba Ajayi, that is the uh, CEO of Mirad Printing Press, has gone to join the church triumphant. Let us continue to pray for the family, that the Almighty God will uphold them, even at this trying moment. And um, the grace for us to work well while on earth, so that after we aspire here on earth, we'll have the grace even to join uh, the heavenly host, even to sing unto God. The Lord will grant to each and every one of us in the mighty name of Jesus. Once again, I want to thank you. Let me appreciate the Bible study presenter, Canon Dijiawe. We appreciate you. And uh, the uh, leader of worship today, Reverend uh, Adi, Ajibadi Adeyemo. Thank you very much. Once again, I want to thank you, the choir, we appreciate you, the organists, uh, the crew members, we want to thank you all. We pray that the Almighty God will lead us through the challenges of this week, and we shall triumph over every form of challenge in the name of Jesus Christ. Once again, thank you, and God bless you. Our withdrawal hymn is hymn 2996, and can it be that I should gain?
Thank you for worshipping with us today at the Chapel of the Healing Cross. We hope today's message ministered to you. Do join us again. Please follow us on Instagram and like our Facebook page to stay up to date on our activities. God bless you.